to have an uninterrupted electricity and water supply from solar energy in the Gambia and beyond. Worry no more, because Solar Enterprise will provide you with the solutions at reasonable cost. We have experienced personals who can install and advise you about your electricity and water supply with a warranty period. We have good quality solar products from North America and Europe. We provide services and sell products to individuals, organizations, institutions, private offices, communities, and government. These products are solar panels, batteries, charge controllers, inverters, water pump, water heaters, freezers, submissable pumps, and general solar accessories. Visit our stores at 48 Kairaba Avenue and Brusubi Highway, or you can call us on 7657-479. 9808483340-9400 or 6359906 Jamano Money Transfer Bureau de Chance Your go-to option when it comes to money transfer With Jamano, you can send money from anywhere in the world to your family and loved ones in the Gambia and be sure the funds will be delivered to them within the shortest time possible for your convenience, funds sent through Jamano Money Transfer can be picked from all the banks and multiple other financial institutions, including Ajib Bank, Trust Bank, GT Bank, Mega Bank, Basic Bank, Reliance Financial Services, and Approved Services. Visit our head office at Bruce B. Opposite AfricMed, next to Trust Bank Limited, or email us at info at jamanomt.com. You can as well call us on 310-3050 or 310-3051 or yet still 733-0688. Our opening hours are 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday to Saturday and 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Sunday. Jamano Money Transfer, your most trusted money transfer service where customer satisfaction is paramount. When you think of a simple, fast, and reliable money transfer, think Jamano Money Transfer. Alba, <laughs> 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 Islamic microfinance is becoming an increasingly popular mechanism for poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world. This microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic microfinance, we provide savings products current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, 
youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832-151 or visit Yona Head Office at Thipa Garage, Bakote or visit any Yona branch located countrywide near you. I'm Lamin Cham and welcome to once again to our weekly look at uh, current affairs. Today we will go to the National Assembly, most of the program, to look at the State of Nation address of His Excellency the President and also wider National Assembly members because a number of bills are before the parliamentarians waiting to be voted on in the coming days. That's I think after uh, going through the address of the President, the National Assembly members will be busy uh, with other bills. Which, what are these bills and what are they calling for? We will be discussing all that. Plus other matters such as the mandatory COVID test imposed on arriving pilgrims. We will discuss uh, that also and other issues that have uh, occupied uh, debate in the uh, nation in the last seven days. With me in the studio today on the brunch is Professor Momodou Ba, academician, also a former presidential candidate, um, and uh, Kemeseng Sane, blogger and journalist who always have a good uh, watch on parliamentary matters will uh, take us to speed with uh, what is happening in parliament. So relax, we also expect to be joined by Pamodumbo. He was a former PRO of the APRC Babili Mansa. We hope, of course hope uh, he will be able to make it before the end of the program. So stay back wherever you are and enjoy the brunch. First professor, welcome. Thank you. Mr. Good. Did you follow the President's uh, State of the Nation address? I did. Uh, I can remember uh, the President is, is very happy, is, according to him, by the growth of the economy. He said uh, the growth uh, forecast for the sub-region, the Gambia has surpassed uh, that. And he is very proud that uh, the government, uh, because of that management, has a lot of uh, trust and confidence from international partners. He mentioned IMF and the American MCC, all of which uh, are coming up with uh, a lot of money uh, for the Gambia. He said that is a, a reflection, a demonstration of the trust in the management of the economy. He spoke uh, also of his government's plans to, as recommended by the TRRC, to close down mile two prisons and uh, transferred prisoners to a location in the greater Banjul area. He mentioned the anti-corruption bill. He said, you know, it has been passed and the commission has been, it's been set up. Um, among other things, he talked about investments in the fisheries sector, in agriculture, in security. I mean, he said uh, there are a lot of, actually a lot of uh, employment opportunities existing in the civil service over 8,000 but then he said sometimes it is a, a capacity problem that delays it uh, you know recruitment of uh, people so you must have listened what are your takeaways from his uh, speech yeah thank you very much first of all we have to uh, recognize that that is a, a constitutional right mm -hmm. uh, according to Constitution, I think, is Section 77, mm -hmm. uh, which states that you know the president should uh, uh, deliver a speech at the National Assembly concerning uh, the affairs of the country, the situation of the country, mm -hmm. which he did. But I'm under under the impression that 
uh, President Barrow still now is just considering himself as an, an opposition leader. Um, the reason why I said that, if you go through his speech, uh, most of what he's saying is conjugated in the future, that we are going to do this, we are going to do this. After being in the uh, affairs of the country for nearly eight years, still now nothing concrete has been done so far. And the fact that they are saying that um, there is a growth rate of, I think, 5.1 or 5.3, yes, exactly. something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, it is not based in the realities of what governments are facing. Mm. And this is the actual truth. Because um, if you talk about a, a growth rate, it is something that has to do with the well-being of the people. Mm -hmm. Whether you know, we have improved on our daily mm. Uh, lives, our daily activities, our needs. For example, whether we have a, we have an improved uh, health sector, whether we have an improved uh, educational system, whether we have an imp 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 well, improved. Well, he painted a he painted a yeah, yeah, yes, a, improved a glorious system. picture of all those sectors. E exactly. About. But now, whether that has an impact to the people. Mm. This is the question that we have to we have to ask because mm. those are just figures, but mm. the true uh, meaning of mm. growth rate mm. should be something that that has impact mm. to the government people. Oh, and okay. if you see the situation where uh, some people are even struggling to have a meal, uh, one meal mm. in a day, mm. then there is a problem. Mm. And uh, previous to that. Uh, there was this World Bank statement, mm -hmm. uh, Africa, uh, World, World, Africa, World Bank uh, Africa chapter, mm -hmm. that stated that uh, the economy of the Gambia was growing. Yes. I think that was in the, that statement mm -hmm. was in preparation of president, the president's speech oh. at the Sonar, oh, okay. uh, uh, which he did at the National Assembly. Mm. And if you look at that, there is no... Uh, it's just the form mm -hmm. that they said about the, the growth, but the details mm -hmm. are not available. I see. So, um, like the way they calculate the economic growth mm -hmm. is through the uh, the GDP, mm -hmm. the GDP or the GNP that is mm -hmm. the uh, gross national product, product. Mm -hmm. or the uh, gross domestic, domestic product. Mm -hmm. Uh, with other uh, measures, mm -hmm. but now if you look at uh, what is in the GDP, mm -hmm. for example, like the the, the components mm -hmm. like infrastructure, like investment, goods and services, mm -hmm. etc. If you look at that, and according to his so much, uh, according to his speech, you know, recently he said that twenty five uh, uh, agriculture has uh, the, the the growth. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we there is a decrease mm -hmm. instead of an increase okay. compared to last year. Last year, because I think last year it was twenty five point yeah. uh, seven, and this time around twenty five point five. So at least there is a decrease. And according to 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 the, uh, to, to World Bank Africa, mm -hmm. uh, the growth, the economic growth of the Gambia is thanks to our agricultural sector. Mm -hmm. So something there is something uh, missing there. Missing there. You okay. mean? You mean uh, there has not been any significant, uh, uh, how to call it, growth in, in terms of our agricultural production? Exactly. For anybody to, yes. for anybody to, for, to warrant the, the rate that the World Bank is saying. Exactly. So another component that we can measure this GDP is uh, uh, like goods and services, goods and services and, and investment. Uh, if you check in that sector, mm -hmm. for example, there has been uh, uh, an imagine. It, uh, there is an emergence of the uh, fintech, mm -hmm. the fintech, fintech yes. the, the fintech sector, financial. That, that is the financial uh, service mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't want to mention mm -hmm. any particular yeah, I know. name, mm -hmm. but we have seen that recently almost. Half of the government population mm -hmm. have sub subscribed to 
uh, to that particular those kind of uh, yes to that particular service digital payment platform the, uh, yes that digital payment pl- platform mm-hmm. and it could be a contributing factor mm-hmm. that led to that growth that they are talking about mm-hmm. but not actually the so in other words the 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 the, the uh, agriculture or that the lives of people have been impacted positively mm-hmm. no so in other words okay you think that the president is just going over these things yeah in and yeah out but what he paints and what the reality people are experiencing in the streets and the homes yes is are uh, different yeah and in this in like if you talk about growth rate mm-hmm. you talk out about job creation mm-hmm. so already there is a contra- contradictory part of his speech where he said about those he said thousand. there are over 8000 yes. opportunities in the government yes. sector sector and he said uh, he mentioned security yes um and and um, you know health i think yes uh, he said uh, mainly from, one of the from the from the security, security and one of the problems is the uh, capacity uh, in the, especially in the health sector and security reform i think he said is is is, is yes uh, you know you know the security the security has, reform has is led delayed, to reduction is delayed, is delayed but he said it has led to reform mm-hmm. re- led to reduction of crimes and oh, a violation of human rights no there is no reduction of crime but i think it is the contrary right but, but at least on the reduction of human rights abuses that we that used to be rampant he said yeah human rights abuses he tried to say that the, yeah. because of the security reforms yes. the military or the police who are normally engage in those human rights have now been reoriented and we have less and less cases of human rights abuse yeah human rights abuse is just not more than asking for permit to demonstrate and then you are not asked you are not been given and mm. on that day that right was violated again i see you know at the national assembly when i want to we will come to that yes so but but, but you know uh, basically but do you agree with him yeah that yeah, we, yeah basically there is no creation of job Well, he said yeah, yeah. So 8000 8000 in the government li- alone line line waiting mm-hmm. but but he he, he he gave reasons why they are not immediately filled you know what i'm just trying to say is that like the impact that the growth rate is supposed to have mm-hmm. uh, to the well-being of the government people mm-hmm. you see what, what i'm trying to talk about i know like that impact is not there what is supposed to be there is when we say okay there there is a high rate of job creation mm-hmm. there is an increase in job creation mm-hmm. there is an improve in our health sector there is an improve in our educational system mm-hmm. okay yeah. and also there is uh, also an improvement also mm-hmm. in the security in the security sector particularly the the, the security of the government people okay. and every day you, see, you hear that someone has been stabbed to death well, we'll come to that yes and so many stuff like that so he so so him implying that there had been a reduction of crime he gave figures which which actually uh, those figures suggest yes he's right that there have been a decline but even in the week he was talking we had of crimes connected to drugs does it which is a different talk and and he didn't even uh, talk about the drug <laughs> he, know, t- we, he did he did yeah, yeah but, but he but, mentioned but, drug and so he, yeah, he said there will be there yeah. will be there will be um more um how, how to call it sanctions so legislation he, he, should to sanctions. Decla- he should have he should have so it makes it tough against uh, offenders drug offenders he, he said there will be tougher ac- actions he should have used that platform to declare a state of emergency concerning <laughs> this discuss okay we'll delve into it more areas he discovered for example he talked about for example uh closing down the mile mile two mile two prisons you know he said this is in line with trr's recommendation i mean since, ever since he came to power i think the promise of the uh, government was to close it down totally and build a new prison he talked about relocating prisoners but he didn't say where the so somewhere in the greater banjul i don't know he didn't give details as to where the new prison will be yeah well he's a specialist in land area so he knows uh, all the lands that are available in the country <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's not a problem you know mm-hmm. land is is you know again the the, the, so. the the problem with his uh, uh, pronouncements and are the implementation problems because even last year we've been talking we know legislations that have either you know were delayed in the process of uh, pro- proclamation in the parliament or after being passed 
they this still, is, they this still is what I'm For example, you, the anti-corruption commission, where is where the commissioners and where is it sitting? Access of information. Uh, yeah, access to information. Yes. Well, they have yeah. at least they have been names. Uh, said yes. that they are commissioners. The victim compensation, okay. you know, they said commission has been built. So, yeah. and this has who know, who would have believed that eight years after yes. the government said yes. the nothing concrete victims has been have been done. not been compensated yes. and stuff like yes. that. So the problem will be again. Are we? He's you know talking about things that. You know, it will take ages before we can see them. Yeah, so I'm uh, always under the impression that, like, he's just an opposition leader who is talking, you know, who is. So, you mean now, yeah. instead of telling people what, this and this, what I have done, he that, did say he has done this, achieved this, government has achieved this, government has achieved that. They are not tangible. But you still. They are not something that, that, <laughs> that we can see in our eyes, mm. that we can touch, that we can feel. This is the actual problem. Mm. Okay, Mr. Sade, you followed, uh, I mean, parliamentary affairs, uh, you must have followed the show now. And what's your perspective on some of the areas we have just discussed, like economy, the security, the uh, area of social, um, and the attention to social things in the country that he talked about? Uh, thank you very much, and once again, it's a pleasure always to be thank here. You. I'm okay. so grateful to be on this platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, first of all, we will thank the president. We we'll congratulate him uh, mm -hmm. for actually fulfilling the constitutional requirement mm -hmm. uh, dictated by the 1997 constitution. That at least mm -hmm. once the president should face the parliament and tell them the programs and the policies of the government exactly. and how do they intend to tackle some of the challenges that the country is confronting with. Yes, and he has fulfilled it, even though uh, there is still a debate in terms of the time frame in which uh, such uh, events are occurred uh, because uh, the intention uh, of the drafters of the constitution is very clear. Uh, they want uh, the government uh, in the beginning of the year to face the parliamentarians and tell them that this is my program for this uh, legislative year. Uh, that means 20, uh, from 2023 to 2024, this is how I intend to manage the affairs of the country. And once he did uh, that uh, state of the nation address, now the parliamentarians is taxed upon them since they are the ones who do oversight against the government. Yeah. Then they will be the one who will now monitor the promise that the president has made, right. the programs that the president has made, uh, so that they will follow up to see it implements on. Then once he come again, they will have where to hold government accountable in terms of the promise that we are given during the SONA. But unfortunately, in this country, it happens either in the middle of the year, when we are five months before the end of the year, so there will be no accountability in terms of it <laughs> implement. Then the next year again, we go into another uh, SONA. So this has been the... Uh, <clears throat> The, the, the trend uh, from the first republic to the second republic, yeah. you know, Jamie sometimes will come two months before the end of the parliament. Of the parliament. Barrow, I could remember a year before last, he came almost three months before the end of the parliament. So the objective is defeated, mm -hmm. uh, number one. And, you know, I have observed also too that all this sonas is more about the uh, just giving us figures in, in terms exactly. of uh, rather than actually the concrete realities on yeah. the ground. And the whole objective is for government to be very clear to the citizens and the parliamentarian because these three organs of government control control or, or run the affairs of the state and uh, the, gov the uh, National Assembly members do the oversight wise the government also come with their programs and the policies. Mm -hmm. So once you face those people you have to give them a concrete reality so that... So, so I see that the, most of the, what the presidents seek are summaries yeah. you know of, of, of on various sectors. sectors. So what when what does when, how do the parliament do they have a, a, a bigger broader uh, Version of the speech, or well, how do they, yeah, they will it? I think yeah. they, will yeah. they, they give them a copy, each yeah. will be given a copy, a copy. Uh, that will be given to them. You know, how the government intend from it's, all the so, but they have their more background information to all the sectors, yeah, yeah, yeah because okay. they also have committees of committees all the, of all the that also, uh, see, follow up in terms of some okay. of the projects, yeah, you know, in terms of so government projects, there are money that we call the monitoring committee that uh, monitor the government projects and other things. So, the, if the president come before the parliament and tell them, okay, okay. Uh, these are the projects that are going, it's the responsibility of the national assembly members to go onto the ground, that's why they have the oversized funds, and where sometimes they will close the parliament, yeah. go into the field, and look at all those things. and I think they should do their responsibility. Now, for example, he said, 
the government is committed to bring in the draft constitution to that and, and, and did not give details. Yeah, and that's something that is so, so funny to me, and number one, I, when I heard of that, and I said, that's why it is important for the parliament to create this issue. In other parts of the country, when the president gives speech, he didn't just go out. You know, you have a debate with the parliamentary. You sit down, maybe or organize a day where the president himself will come and face the parliamentarians, and they scrutinize his speech and ask him questions. And if I were, if that opportunity was given, we'll tell the president, how will the draft constitution come? Yes, to December. hear from his own. Uh, uh, December, because uh, the law is very clear that mm -hmm. before you put uh, a constitution before the uh, people, it has Hospital to be gazetted. Yeah, it has yes, to be first gazetted, and it has to take 10 months, 3 days. Uh, sorry, uh, 3 months, 10 days. 10 days. It has to be gazetted so that the public will have an opinion, because the law is meant for the people. It will be governing the people, so that uh, 3 months, 10 days, radios will pick it from, uh, radios and newspapers will publicize it. Mm -hmm. why, why do they need this constitution? What is the intent of the government? What are the contents of this? things and why so then the public will have an opinion that's why the public take participation so now we are in june yeah almost we are in july yeah. so if the country because already the one that is uh, rejected cannot come back it's very clear you have to start afresh the law is saying that once parliament rejected any bill it, it the, the bill cannot be reintroduced it has it it is uh, it so has to be changed. It has I to mean, be a new constitution that uh, has to come in, not the one that is rejected. Okay. So if that is the process now, then you need uh, three months, ten days for it to come back to the parliament. It has to be gazetted. When it's gazetted now, it's tabled before the parliament. When will the parliamentarian set a date and you go for the first reading? That's introduction. And it has to take two weeks after the first reading or three months, eh, one month completely for the parliament. Then it comes again for the se second reading where you look at the merits. So you mean the, the December referendum you talked about is highly unlikely? Absolutely. I spoke to, you know, I the one here that I spoke to, they said it's practically impossible. Unless if they tell us that they have an agreement with the NAT, and I call the uh, National Printing GPPA to find out whether there is a gasset that is being before them. They said there is no gasset. Mm -hmm. So automatically that tells you that it's not. So when are you planning to put the gasset? But the requirement, if you don't do that, then you, that means you are violating the very law that should govern in terms of how the constitution should be promulgated. So all these things are important. So if you give Gambians, you say December, yes. how will the process go? It needs debate. You cannot just take it and tell the parliament to prove it. And if, if the parliament even prove it, that's not the end. Then mm -hmm. you have to send it to the IEC. Yeah. Then the IEC also will now hold a, uh, 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 a referendum. Yes. And the civil the, the, all the sensitization. Then the sensitization of the national civil education. And you need a threshold of 75%. That will say that, yes. So, but that the civil education must educate the people to understand. It's a yes or no vote. Mm. So it's not just about it's not a, yes, it's, it's it's yes or no, no vote. Mm. So they have to educate by the contents of it, whether the people to understand people the to whole understand. language. So automatically it's not possible for ah. us to go to referendum before nine months. So they have to be very clear. This is why the opportunity, and I think when the debate opens, they will send this quickly because the vice president will come on behalf of the president, and I think he should be ready to answer all these all questions. Yes, a lot you know, of you cannot just come and give us figures and, oh, you just tell us promise, but you must tell us how that will be possible yeah. because there are laws that govern all. He talks about the agricultural sector. Yes, that's right. He group. said... Is there was a growth in agricultural sector, yes. but that's not the issue here. We are saying that the amount of um, uh, rice mm -hmm. that we imported in this country is yeah. too much. It uh, constitutes almost the half of our budget in terms of... They said they are going to buy 180 tractors and 20 boats. Uh, they are going to buy. For a year round, they are going to buy. Every time we are going, going to buy. We are going to buy. Well, when, going when, are going well, to when planting is already yeah. here. Yes. But when are we going to have food sufficiency? That's the whole issue yeah. here. How are we planning to have all these things? These are the issues that is confronted. Tell us how do your government intend, because you have already given a contract to a private sector, private sector that you said that you know those are the ones that will what is the stage of that project should have been captured there to which project to the books no, no the, the loan that was ah, the yeah. oil to oh yes that's right the, oh, for essential uh, concern uh, including farming and uh, petroleum uh, products yes agricultural products the foods that we will consume and all that yeah. so you could be able to face us and tell us that okay this is how far this project is yeah. and we are foreseeing in next three months we will start to consume the things that are actually being cultivated in our country I, I, do, you, do you assume the vice president who can represent him will have details of this the, the, uh, because the, the law is very clear that if the president the vice president would represent the president so it means that every answer should be provided by the vice president when he comes to face the parliament so that he will actually uh, tell the people so uh, the intention of the but what about uh, he mentioned also the the issue of um fisheries so it's related to agriculture but it stand it stands here as uh, on its own here yes. i mean many people were worried about these um contracts that have been given fisheries contracts with uh, foreigners he said due to several factors the total revenue collected from fisheries sector decreased from 131 million 555 thousand in 2022 to 
110 million, representing a decline of 20 million, or about 15.8%. Uh, he said to get the most from this sector, his government is actively reviewing its fishing license regime to increase protection for additional, additional fisheries and ensure fair and sustainable management of our fisheries resources. Now, yeah, for there me, there has been a lot of criticism as to whether we are getting all the potentials from, from our fisheries resources. Yeah. What do you make of it? Yeah, for me, uh, first of all, before this guy come, you know, I ha even have an observation in regards to this whole issue of uh, lancing. And if you want to create employment, as he always said, mm -hmm. for me, the, the solution is not just to give lancing to people and come and fish in our waters and just take the world, uh, the fish. You know, and, uh, you know, we could have created what we call our own uh, landing center, whereby we will give lancings to people. But you catch the fish and land it here and process it here and send it. We have foreign asking. And by then, you will create employment for the young people. Rather than just, hey, you will come, you sign an agreement with them six years you can fish in our waters and you give us 550 million euros you know those are not the and normally the problem with the government is even if there is money raised from this sector <coughs> it normally doesn't stay there yeah. they use it for other it areas. doesn't even reflect in the national budget yes, like the president the, could have so, tell us this is what is and he has announced yeah. a lot of uh, grants there's there has no very yeah. specific indication yeah. that this is what we got from the, in the, in the budget uh, in the budget this is what is generated from the mining sector this is the money that is generated from the fishing mm -hmm. lands that we have given or the fishing sector all this thing because the law is very clear that all revenues that are collected on behalf of the government or any money that comes on behalf of the republic of the gambia must be safe in the consolidated fund, fund and it cannot be removed without the approval of the parliament but you will see a special account that will be created for this mining sectors a special account for this fishing ranching and the law is saying that there should be like it used to be on the jammy all jammy you know so these are some of the issues that we have it has to be reflect on the national budget we know that this is what is generated from the mineral resources that we have as a country then the national assembly members if you are to take that money you have to come to the parliament and seek for approval but if it is in a special account you don't need the approval of you don't the parliament. Need where is the holding of accountability and all those things so these are the challenges that we have and i think the national assembly must be robust mm -hmm. in terms of holding government accountable but if you don't do that then you have failed in your responsibility that's why it is two separated uh, institutions Institute, yes. and you are independent and they went up and extended they have created now an autonomy mm -hmm. on themselves that you know they they are independent from the these from, people from the people. yeah so that they can hold them accountable their work can be easy so i think we have to review our lunch and he said he is going to review that policies and i think it is very important but we look inward rather than outwards Professor, you talk about education and you have a special interest in education. He said uh, that there have been significant infrastructure growth in the education sector with 775 new classrooms and uh, 10, well, 1,030 1, toilets built. He said child, early childhood enrollment has increased to 136,000 in 2023. Mm -hmm. uh, and he said that enrollment in tertiary institutions, including Tibet, has reached 36,000. And he said a total of 2,246 scholarships have been awarded since 2023 to Gambians to pursue education. Well, you know, he, you know, he, he's so obsessed with these classroom things. I, I had his critics <laughs> criticizing him of, uh, uh, I mean, building impossible numbers of uh, classrooms. But he did. He's very proud of the fact that uh, a lot of classrooms have been built actually in real terms under his regime. Yeah, actually, um, in terms of infrastructure, in education you know thank god you know but education is not only about infrastructure but that, you are good uh, you agree uh, that he's building a no quite a good number of uh, i don't we cannot prove it you know just giving the figures like this you know we cannot just prove it you know so they need to 775 for, uh, yes but how can we prove that classroom yes how can we prove that but, but if he's building 10 yeah. uh, he's getting <laughs> yes. said he's yes. saying he's like this 10, 000, is it no, 10 classrooms a day yeah. <laughs> i think so yes <laughs> saying it like this they just want to make him look funny yeah. but he didn't mean that i didn't uh, saying it like this it's simple mm -hmm. and easy mm -hmm. so but the issue is that the aspect of education there are so many comp components or aspects that we should consider you mm -hmm. know that is the accessibility that is the um, availability that is the adaptability and then things like that in this area you have infrastructure for example but how about the social aspect mm -hmm. like the teachers the remuneration of teachers you know still now as we are talking most of them have taken their their, their salaries mm. for, the, for 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 next month. Mm. Ah, well, the, 
for this one okay yes so uh, after i was told that some were have been paid Okay. In, 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 in July or, or in, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what that, that, that's what that's what I was probably told. they took yeah. uh, one, one by six. six. Uh, well, one, one by, by six. six. Some I was even told some were paid like this. Uh, the, the, the the salary for July. Well, 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 the salary, the salary is for July. That should not be done. I the salary for I July. They could have uh, yeah, yeah. You know we are in what month? June. Are we? June. Yeah. So the. End of month. Mm. That's where that that's that's when you were supposed to have your salary. Mm. So oh, okay. You mean they have been paid in advance for June? Been, yeah, yeah. They have been. In, they have been paid. They've already advance. spent the June money. They, now they have to wait for another thirty days or so. They have to yeah, wait for that's, another thirty. Yeah, that's, that's how difficult, that's common, difficult that's it is. Yeah. You know. So when you talk about teachers, you talk about the most important civil servants of this country. Mm -hmm. The people who uh, put knowledge into our children the future of our children you know so that social aspect also need to be co uh, considered they are mm. mm. so that is also uh, also a problem not only the the infrastructure the infrastructure is good mm. okay because they need classrooms they need toilets they need other they need li libraries and others but it's not enough mm. so you have to provide the 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 the, the, the social aspect meaning the teachers mm -hmm. you know the staffs the educational good what about high education he yeah, mentioned yeah. you know you know there have recently been a bill that's establishing three universities mm -hmm. that is the you said that we already know that mm -hmm. gambia college also to be to be a university yeah. as well as uh, what's the other one again the mdi the mdi to be to be for the civil service yes. university yes so that we have three universities mm -hmm. that may be up now what what you Take on that. Yes, we need to congratulate Prof. You know, because he's doing a great job there. He's one of my. You think that's a good idea? Three universities. Yeah, yeah. You know, alongside Gambit uh, University out, of the Gambit. Out, no, for me, the the the, 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 reason, the reason why uh, those institutions are being transformed to universities, it is to be in line, mm -hmm. you know, with uh, university studies. Because some of them, you know, they they offer degrees. Mm -hmm. They could offer degrees. So the, the the diploma, diplomas like higher national diplomas, other types of diplomas is different from. Why can't they a, be a, a university? They, is it why different can't they from be schools a, a university of, of the University of the Gambia? Because when we are talking about the struggles that the University of the Gambia is going through, then you you come and set up three orders. Uh, where will the funding? Uh, the, the the technical the staffing and facilities and infrastructure come from or are they going to be housed at the at the university of the Gambia? yeah you know in which case nobody will know in, in, in trying to di diversify the university and make them autonomous mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. uh, could be something you know whereby like this is their speciality you know almost in many countries if you go there the particularly they have these polytechnics yes. whereby you have they are mainly specialized in this in, in one area or in one area in so for example sector. tibet will be skills yes skills for example also like prof, and they have a good arrangement you know, with you know, ghana prof, and other places prof, prof was educated in senegal he did his uh university studies at santa job university mm -hmm. the same alma mater and like if you have the uh enna that 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 is the administrative school mm -hmm. Oh, Senegal. Yeah. Is so that, that's a college of uh, university no, yeah, of its own? Yes. It's a, it, it is a school of its, of its own. own. And that, that is where they train S civil servants. Civil servants. Mm. And if you see, recently it was passed through parliament mm. to adopt the same the same system. Mm. So today, uh, normally, mm. uh, the, 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 the idea mm. is that for civil servants to be trained, they are mm. diplomats. Diplomat. Yeah, and anything that the government, any... Uh, that will be for public administration. Yes, any type of job or any type of uh, sector that the government needs would be trained in that particular in that, in that particular area. And if you see, this is the problem. Mm -hmm. Now you can take anybody and make him or her an ambassador, mm -hmm. while he doesn't even know no anything about, about diplomacy. What about um, the Gambia College? Because yeah. what what they do basically is to train people to be, become teachers and. Uh, I, I think they have nurses also, nursery, nurses, nurses, mm. medicinal. Yeah, also. yeah, Gambia College. There are different uh, How many branches, even agriculture. Okay. Know, yeah, okay. It, 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 uh, different, different, different areas. But okay. also, that is also part of 
uh, giving it an autonomy okay. you know for it to be uh, to, to for it to specialize, specialize in, 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 in teaching so mm. I think also for me as far as I'm concerned that is so you welcome the creation of this state yeah, university yes yeah, yeah, yeah. so that is also uh, trying to give more uh, equality mm. you know to, 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 to such institutions. Okay, okay. All right, um, let's look at the other matters before the National Assembly. Which other bills? I had this uh, this controversial judicial officer's bill is, 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 is coming. I mean, the government is very anxious about, uh, uh, you know, the fate that really came to, you know, the fate it, it, it suffered the last time. They're very worried that they, they didn't want uh, anything like to come so that so much so that the, the what they dreaded much was increasing. Mm -hmm. They don't like anybody suggesting that uh, uh, the bill is going to increase uh, the salaries and others. And when in actual fact, that, mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. all what is meaning implied. Mm -hmm. I don't want to. I don't want to invite you to a quarrel with the <laughs> with the AD chamber. But then, yes, uh, how do you think uh, MPs are reacting to it? Yeah, actually, I think now they have done their for homework first uh, before they will reintroduce this bill mm. uh, by gathering the parliamentarians uh, in one of the hotels and uh, bring the judges, you know, to have an interaction with them to convince them, you know, how uh, this bill is important in terms of uh, the independence of the judiciary. And you cannot have a country where the independent the judiciary is not independent, and the judiciary cannot be independent if they are not financially independent, because they deal with cases whereby millions of millions of dollars are involved. Involved, you know, so if you are not uh, somebody who is had the well paid, well paid, you might be tempted, might be tempted uh, to come, and yeah. to do certain things. So they convince the national assembly and give examples of other parts of the world uh, how their judicial officers or the, how uh, their judicial officials are well taken care of because also they convince them that they are the only uh, sector whereby even if you serve the judiciary like a judge, you cannot take another job after your retirement. <laughs> and uh, also they don't have what we call this; uh, they are not considered as a civil and so they don't have these opportunities where the privileges that are given to the civil. So they were able to convince them, and I think now. So, but I think by and large, all these are true. Um, you know, because I, I understand that a lot of governments don't aspire to take the jobs because they know it is not mm -hmm. lucrative, mm -hmm. uh, and they go into private practice private. where they make a lot of the money. Monies, yeah. So, so there is a lack of personnel. Yes which uh, also results into this backlog of cases mm -hmm. uh, you know everybody accept that they should be paid very well yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but the issue always is i mean they blame the journalists for explaining to the public what is in the bill you see that's why i quarrel with them yeah. we definitely want uh, them all we, we have no vested interest yeah. well, our interest is to tell the people mm. what is it's in the bill yeah. if the bill is asking for more money for the judges mm. we mm. have to say it directly well, absolutely that's how that, that, only that, way we can say it yeah. but you don't want us to talk about it because yeah. you fear that uh, other people will, will will get up and say well of course yeah. naturally you cannot avoid that that's the intention of the bill it is very clear it's very clear. Uh, for the national uh, exactly. the judiciary and also their pensions yes. after the work so that the state will take so care that of the state will will take take so that they can have money mm. people can aspire yeah, to do the job jobs, yeah. and that is why it's necessary to yeah. as they themselves said bridge the gap yeah absolutely in terms of what they get yeah. you know compared to that's, that's fine that's fine yeah but then the crime is why should we tell the people <laughs> that uh, you know, they are uh, want the judges salaries to be increased i don't mean, yeah. we have a role to play we have to tell people what is there absolutely absolutely but but do you think uh uh, in sure your analysis, it it might end up, no, it, this time around, it will I'm, go. I'm definitely because ah, they okay. have convinced you know, even they do this, uh, room, you know, co they convince so many of these national they have to take on, them uh, to retreat and, and, and reorient them, them, and them, and them work on their minds. Uh, play with them. That is why they don't want anybody to, uh, <laughs> so they have convinced most of this national assembly, and I'm sure, yeah. uh, it will definitely pass. And once it is passed, then it becomes a law, uh, you know. So it's so unfortunate that you know, there are certain things that we could have questioned, you know. Yeah. We are not saying that we will deny them this opportunity. Okay. But our argument is not about, about there are certain things that we feel like you know, they were not actually necessary. Yes, we can provide in terms of you know your security and even after your work because you deal with criminal cases, you sentence other people and we feel like they are you no, know, they might attack you. So your security must be a concern yes, to the states yeah, and other things. We can provide you, but there are certain things that you know uh, that, that are not actually necessary. And so those are the things that we try and do because the whole objective of you gazetting a bill before it goes is for the media to pick it from the gazette. Exactly. And the 
and for the system. Yeah, publicize them for citizens to know. So you cannot blame a media officer for doing his job. Yeah, you know, see. if not, then don't put it in the don't that, put it exactly, in the bill. Exactly. But once you put everything there, will scrutinize for the public to understand. Exactly. And then, of course, the people have the right to translate and to in, what to, 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 to analyze what it entails. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody knows that the bill is trying and to the, increase the benefit. Yeah, absolutely. But you say we shouldn't say that. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. I think the fear is that okay, other people will say why should judges be kept? Yeah. yeah. And that's actually, that's, that's what people that's, are saying. That's also. natural. That, 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 that's, and that's normal. Mm. And for the fact that uh, they are increasing their salaries, you know, so that they can uh, be in line with their status, mm -hmm. I think people don't have problem with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, but what people don't understand is in these hard times, when people are suffering, when things are so hard for everybody, when they are underperforming as well. You know, you know if you see almost all the sectors that you take in this government, they are underperforming. Uh, he, the president himself said it, you know, and that was the reason why NAWEC, the last time, you know, uh, they signed an agreement that... A performance. performance. Yeah, yeah, performance ag uh, agreement. Mm -hmm. That, that that's the reason why some of them their salaries I, not only now like SOEs. Well, 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 SOEs. Yes. SOEs. So they are so not like management. They senior are senior yeah, management, yeah. I'm told. I'm so, gonna have their so concerning so, the, 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 the justice uh, sector as well. We've seen there has been delays of so many cases. Yeah, but but, but is, is that not because they yeah. don't have personnel there? Yes, they said like yes. it's not like you said. It's like it's not lucrative. Right. Right. Yes, right. Right. So you have yeah. 30 judges. Yes. So, so they have a valid government has a valid so, argument yes. as far as that is concerned. Yes. So it means also they have to really improve on their performance mm. so that people also will say that they deserve their salaries mm. and they have to deserve their salaries as well. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Well, the teachers, if you like, you said that the police yeah. and the yeah. teachers, <laughs> are also up in arms Absolutely. and said, what do you think can be done? you know kex to okay uh, let's use the government ter terminology to bridge the gap mm -hmm. between the new renumerations of teachers in the gambia and teachers elsewhere mm -hmm. or um, nurses here and nurses elsewhere because the criticism is that the government is they've they've they've, they've gone good goodies for the executive mm -hmm. They've done goodies for the legislature. Mm -hmm. Now they are doing for the judiciary, mm -hmm. and these are the three arms of government. Oh, All of them, their bread is bought. Yeah, absolutely. So what about the rest? That's what people criticize. And, right? and education is the most important yeah, sector. So, so what, what do you think should be done? Yeah, for me, I know. I last time when they are doing the salary increase, man, I tell them for us because they always keep on saying that the gap is too wide. Mm -hmm. So if the gap is wide, you cannot make a, a salary increase across the board. Mm -hmm. Like uh, from the ones that are on the top, the judiciary, the executive, you cannot just come and just add everything because the president if you look at it by then his salary was now is 240 million 200 and, uh, yeah i think uh, it was before 170 something before the increase yeah, now it's now 200 thousand plus and the, uh, and the allowances didn't, didn't come uh, yes the allowance didn't come so automatically if you want to uh, close the gap what you do at the bottom you increase those salaries maybe to uh, 75 percent why the judiciary if you add the senior officials maybe 10 percent or 20 percent so that the gap would be closed so, but if yes, you keep on least. increasing across the board you it, only affects, the, it only affects it only affects the people the, the gap is still just the same. Yes. And once you do that, then, then tax will increase, products will increase, yes. and everything. So this is those people that are earning the, the small capacity, when suffer. they go to market, they still suffer. They still so suffer. that's the situation that we have. So for them to deal with that, because ministers like the president, they are provided everything yes. by the state. You have your own transportation. Why is a teacher will go to the garden and struggle like. to transportation to come to work? You have a so ministers go home with. Uh, up to seven, eighty thousand. Yeah, yeah, salaries and allowances, and allowances together, yeah. eighty thousand. Yeah, if it's thirty days, and you have a telephone free for you, you have telephone allowance, you have robin allowance, you have clothing allowance, you have all this transport is free for you. You go and take fuel. So these teachers and the nurses will struggle. The nurses will not. The even police have officers, you will see them in the streets seeking for bills. So if you want to cross those gaps, you know you try to increase their salary, increase their transport allowance. You know, provide even service, bus service for them that will transport them rather than struggling in the street in order to go. As you see it teacher will be struggling. First lessons, most of these teachers will not the teachers be teachers themselves will miss first lessons. Lesson. First lesson. first most period. of the time, all the schools, you yeah. go there, first lesson, 8 o'clock, there's no teacher. You count yeah. them, the teachers that are in the school. Yes, you know, teaching is a very noble, noble job. Issues. That's where everything you know, starts. Yeah, so they are the ones who teach. The, uh, everyone, you know, the, the nurse, That's the, where everything the, the, starts. The, the doctor, you know, the, the lawyer, everything. 
So for them also they don't have. So the politicians they, they, have. They, they don't they have, have. The politicians have their bread butter. The, the, the teachers yes, they don't uh, have, uh, are still struggling. So they, they, they don't have podiums. Mm-hmm. And, and those sectors they have they can travel uh, every now and then and have podiums. So now we, uh, you have to contextualize things. Like you go to the teaching field, what are the activities that they do? You just try to <laughs> you just try to valorize that. Mm-hmm. For example, uh, teachers always mark scripts every time. You know, first term, second term, test. You know, there should be remuneration in terms of that. Whatever uh, evaluation that they do, that they be they, that they be given, uh, that that that, that that they are paid. You know, based on that, based on the number of copies that they mark, etc. That could also help. You know, in in addition to what they have. For example, like in Senegal. Uh, teachers who normally go for baccalaureate, yeah. you know, <clears throat> every year the baccalaureate is done in such a way that teachers are taken from one place, they travel to another region, one region to another region, uh, one school to another school. So you are given, you are paid a uh, per diem, mm-hmm. and then at the same time, you know, you have the, the, the copies that you mark, you have been paid for that too. Yeah, as well. so example. So if so, if, if so those are things that you can you can you can improve because teachers are not here to travel. Mm-hmm. Just so, like so the, the, the civil service. The black government argue the the judiciary uh, the judicial officers have uh, things that are peculiar mm-hmm. to their job, mm-hmm. and in you know in which case they need uh, special attention. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, we can understand. Well, magistrates too are now displaying. They say they are not catered, and most of the time they are the ones who are really affected because most of is this, this bill not affect, encompassing no, all of them. No, no, no. It's oh, it's just the judges. It's only the judges. Hey, magistrates. So magistrates, they came with their position paper, which they share with some of us, the media persons. Okay. You know, what are they say, saying? Saying that you know they are the people that actually suffered in terms of uh, because all these people that are sending mile to force, they will come to the magistrate court, first, and, then, and the magistrate will now sentence them to mile two pending their trial. Oh, I, I, yes, I, even if they court. commit murder, they, they, they come first to the lower court. So, and most of the time, they will enter vehicle with people that they have convicted, oh. or you know, in the same vehicle because they don't have those uh, vehicles that are provided by the judges, where you will have securities and you have all these. So, most of them they don't have vehicles. They will join people that they have convicted, and that security-wise, it's not good for them. And you look at you know some of the risks that they have. So, they said they should be catered for. But when I talk to the other side, they said you know the bill is there because the magistrates are the ones that are promoted, you know, to uh, to become judges. Judge. So I once see. they become judges, they will find this thing. Oh, so they I see. So, so this so is the bill. The bill <laughs> cater for them. Then. But they are always aspiring <laughs> yeah, to become judges. Yeah, but they said how many people do? Like how many people uh, will be? Because would we'll become they uh, will become uh, just just and so in between, what will happen? What will happen? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so they should. The <laughs> Irish government needs to do what they need to do is to overall general look at salaries uh, absolutely, absolutely. and and in their own words enhance. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they are comfortable with. Uh-huh. Enhance the salaries. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Um, let's go to, to the. Importers, cement importers association, and the uh, manufacturer. How do they call it? Uh, manufacturing companies. They also go with the name AGM, Association of. Uh, cement associations. Yeah, cement you know, cement manufacturing companies. Yes. Yeah. So, as recent as yesterday, I think I had the cement importers holding a press conference. Yes, Alliance Francis. Yeah. yeah, you know, in reaction to there have been reported arrests mm-hmm. uh, of of some of the protesters at at the. Parliament building yeah. the other day. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you think the government is handling and should settle this matter? Because the, the argument has always been that the government must protect the local industries. But these people are said that these things, you, these companies, you are calling them local, so they are themselves, you know, trading the same way we are trading. You're protecting them, giving them privilege that you don't give us, and they actually. What they claim they can do in terms of production cannot consume, the, you know, cannot cannot really feed the market. Yeah, uh, actually, does it? So there is a preferential treatment, you know, concerning this issue. Mm-hmm. There is a kumba amday and kumba amunday. <laughs> Kum- you know, who are so, kumba amunday? Yeah, of uh, course. Well, you know that is the, the, ja, the, the, the ja group. The ja oil and orders. That's ja, very really important. Ja, and, and orders. They are ah. the Kumba Amdays. Mm. You know the Kumba Amdays. They are the those local cement. But why would you take? Why would you take? Why don't you think government should protect the local industries? 
Yes, the the local in like the ones who are in, importing. No, the, the, the jar oils, the salam oils, and the gas. Yeah, no, I think they uh, it's not uh, bad to help to help them. Mm. Like local industry, it's not bad to help them, but it should be equitable. You know, it should be done to everybody. But here we all know that you know the gum government has single handedly uh, preferred or is favoring the jar group. This is visible, you know, up to an extent of, you know, giving grants, giving loans, you know. No, what well, the government is guaranteed a loan. Guaranteed. Yeah, uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, it is not right. done for. for but the, they said it's only jar oil that, 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 yes, that fit the criteria. That fit the criteria. If they set their own criteria, you know, they know how to. No, they set a criteria that yeah, only jar oil. You you want to say it was tailor made for your guy? No, that, that is obvious. That, 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 that is the government denied that. Obvious. Government so, said they are the ones so who met the condition. We, I think we have to avoid that. You know, mm -hmm. we have to avoid that. Mm -hmm. You know, that is we have to make everybody on equal footing. Yeah, but then, and we have to create the conditions. Yeah. Let's for, look at this situation. We have to create those criteria for them. Mm -hmm. We have to create those conditions. We are the ones who set. Government is the one who set those criteria. And mm. government should be the one who should accompany those local. You know, there was an argument that they could at least split the, uh, I mean, the the, the the loan in between uh, the several operators. But again, the government. I had the minister of trade saying, mm. the problem is, what if they default? Yeah. Government will be forced to pay. Mm. So they believe, yeah, well, mm. even if they default, they, have so, many they have so many assets and so many things that the government can recover the money. Yes. So the most serious matter in this case is the increment of the tax the high increment of the tax that is to discourage the you know people bringing cement across the um, border yeah because but, but if you see they are all important well they, yeah, that's yeah, it's, it's, they, it's, 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 they are all in, in, vehicles still go to Senegal yeah, to bring yeah, yes uh, according to even I uh, followed their press conference mm -hmm. that they are president that's what Mr. They are, Cham, yes, Mr. Yeah. Cham, according to Mr. Cham, Cham. said Cham. when they are, they are out of stock mm -hmm. they just go to, uh, to Senegal, Senegal and bring you know to, just to, as they are doing yeah as they are doing and, and they also, are not paying the one and also Senegal is outside the Gambia mm -hmm. no matter wherever Ja and others are bringing their cement is also out of the yeah, jurisdiction of the Gambia. Mm. So they are all of them. They are important. Mm. So what is the difference in that? I haven't seen any difference. So they they, they should just be they should be guided. Mm. And know. the argument that the factories can supply can meet the demand. And these people are claiming no, you can, you don't have enough, and there is cement shortage in, in other parts of the country. That is just the that is, ju that is just the strategy. Just, that is just a strategy just to keep them out of the game. But they cannot meet this demand. No. They, that is just that is just a strategy to keep them out of the game. Mm. They should allow everyone. The Jawa claim they brought thirty-five thousand metric tons, and they can even bring fifty if the ports facilities can handle it. They said there will be no shortage, but these people are claiming that there are shortages already, mm. e even right now. They, the they, they know it better than us. We are not in that uh, um, sector, so we are just analyzing based on the information that we receive from them. If that is the case, if that is the case, then I believe. You know how. I, I uh, one layman analyzed it. He just told me, Mr. Cham, you know, if you let me help you with this argument. If the local factories said they have enough in the country, local and, factories, and how do you call No, it? listen, he said, even if, well, hmm. local yeah. factories, in quotation, or local uh, factories. Yes. He was just trying to educate me about the claim that they made that they can meet the supply, that they have a lot of cement. He told me, what business sense would it make? for some of us, thousands of us, mm -hmm. to go and import something that is already here, flooded in the markets. What business sense would it make? That's how he told me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's how he told me. Yeah, he said, look, the, think for yourself. Yeah. Do you think if they have enough here, we will go to Senegal, risk our money and bring it if there is already, the market is flooded here. Mm. So I said, well, you make a point there. So I said, can I always look at it? How do you see it? The situation. Yeah, absolutely. I think our government could have handled this uh, properly. Uh, yesterday was at a press conference, you know, I covered the press conference, and they are arguing uh, seriously and they said they have evidence to this effect in terms of they give out uh, how much uh, revenue they have in, uh, uh, put in the hands of the government in terms of the tax that they pay. Uh, 
the cement importers and uh, the amount of uh, tonnage that they have bring so far in this country uh, for uh, this year from January to uh, June before they were banned. You can see there's a huge amount of and they are uh, run out of stock. So that means that the demand in this country is too much. So and they have already these two factories out here. They also claim that all of them are importers like you said that because the, the, the difference is they go and buy the complete bag from Senegal why these people will buy the bulk and just come and buy the package in this yeah. country. So that's the difference. So if that is the case then all of them are importers. So if the government is there to make sure that they have a level a ground for business sectors you know but government coming with this uh, might discourage even other investors to come there because first of all if people have to invest in a country they look at the security uh, <laughs> the, of their business how government will figure whether they will not just jump up one day and come with a policy like the policy that they have come up with mm -hmm. you know and leaving these people and they look at the in terms of uh, the employment that they created they said you know each of their truck they have almost uh, four uh, people that are working and you have the driver you have two apprentices and you have the second driver in the loaders uh, in Senegal and Gambia. In Senegal, you have loaders in the Gambia, and you, they have their uh, small subsets where they will have two or three people that will be employed. You know? So, when the cement comes, they offload those who are the ones who will sell them. So, they said they create also contributed uh, in terms of employment. They have the figures. And you know, so for me, I think of the factories are also claiming they, they invested billions, billions to get the machines and, 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 and employ people. The people there. So, government have to sit down and uh, sit with these people and sit uh, on the you know, have a dialogue in terms of, you know, how they will solve this issue because at the end of the day, you know, these people to are according to their claim, what they have given us, if that is the reality, then that shows that they are contributing towards the GDP of this country. And in Gambia is a tax-based economy, so if you have an opportunity where you could uh, bring tax so that we would be able to provide the service for the citizens, why not? You know, but, you know, for me, like, this is a sector that we didn't have much idea in terms of we only listen to both parties. What we hear is what, unless we have the opportunity, why the government will come uh, concretely tell us why we have taken this decision, what are the... Uh, uh, why? What, what studies have you done to come to this conclusion? So, you know, th that's where people will pick it and will also. But if you keep on silence and we only hear from the side those who are fighting, then we will just report based on what we are hearing. If you talk to the uh, local industry, they will tell you that we can uh, provide the cement consumption of this country. But if you ask these people, they will tell you that presently, if you go to Basia, there is no cement in Basia. Yeah, it is in Basia. People volunteer that I'm here. I have no cement. Uh, so these are the issues that we are having. So do you want, uh, how many people are constructing in Basi? How many people? So those people will stop, you know, and the rainy season is coming and all that. So they need to sit down and discuss this issue. I think that will be the best solution. Ah, okay. You heard about the mandatory test that uh, has been slammed on arriving pilgrims. I think if, 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 the, if the flight schedules are really adhere to we might have got the first flight already in the, in the country. Today. But we heard news from Mecca that the Pilgrims are not quite happy about that. Um, um, you think the government is right to bring in these measures? Yeah, it's it's normal, you know. So when they said there is COVID, and this, uh, they, there have been a lot of cases reported uh, in Senegal. Yeah, they uh, know. They know the. They, they know, among the pilgrims, they know it more than us. Like the Minister of Health, you know, know better than us what's happening in the health sector. You know, so Senegal also they are copying from Senegal. Senegal they are testing, they are doing mandatory testing, mm -hmm. and also it is necessary for them also to do it, not to take the risk, also allowing them to, you know, enter while uh, having that, and then that could also propagate. They, they are, the pilgrims argue that uh, there has not been any issue of yeah, yeah, COVID exactly. in Saudi Arabia. Nobody, nobody's, nobody's worried about the issue there so if um if, if that's the case why would they be subjected to it here they said it will yeah it will, it will really uh, keep keep their waiting time or at a flight time and then you know clearing out tower at banjul airport it's longer they said it's you not know, a good this enough. this covid issue you, you know there it's are a lot of things there are a lot of conspiracy theories you know if you are to go by that you know you know it covers everything that they are saying and uh psychologically also uh, it doesn't tell well it's not good for them you know coming from make uh, you know their families uh, expecting to see them and also but, but, organizing but, organizing some guys but, but it's important, but it's important. Yeah, yeah, that, that, it's no, important yeah i'm talking about text, I'm, text, I'm talking text. about from the own population yeah yeah from their own point of view mm. uh, from their own point how they are seeing things like as we have your your people are expecting you 
Uh, there are events that are going going to be organized like Ganelis, Bunyas, etc. But they no. said if you are that is tested what negative, yeah. they ask the pilgrims yeah. to that, that is what I'm start saying. wearing masks. Yeah. So now and you know they all the yes. usual protections. Yes. At so least there is no quarantining. Mm-hmm. Yes. So now that would them, have been a big issue. Yes. yes. For now, for them to you know to be assured that they are not victims of COVID, so then it's, it's better for them to 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 do the testing. Okay, so so uh, I mean, yes, Kex, you believe this is yes, it is is a good measure. It's yes, a good absolutely. You know, the role of government is actually there is laws that even in place where you can compel a citizen if you have a suspect in terms of that you have a disease that can uh, yes, even if there is no even if there is no epidemic, yes, yes. that's right, right, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm sitting by even uh, keeping that person in one space to yeah. save the entire population rather than allowing that person to join the society. Yes. So if they have uh, tangible reasons of a company, that, uh, 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 some of the people uh, might have uh, contacted this idea. We all have letters. We all have letters. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kex yeah. is having his own call. Is it? Yeah, my dad. Yeah. Yeah. That is coming. Yeah. 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 I don't scare. <laughs> <laughs> no, for me, you know, we have already made our plan. It's coming. Yeah. Yeah. But for me, I believe that if they have any tangible reason in terms of, you know, that... that Protecting the uh, people from COVID. Disease, we know when the pandemic... Uh, yeah, when it happened, it was... In this country, how we suffer in terms of... So we cannot allow it to spread in the country. I think it's just the measures that yeah, 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 were relaxed. Yeah. But the disease is still... Disease, they have, the infection is still infection. infection. So if to put that protection for me, I have no... And I urge them if there's tangible reason, they should compare, they should uh, uh, subject themselves into this test so that actually they will do the uh, test uh, with development. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, it's not it's not easy anyway. It's not easy for them, so you understand, you know, the psychological effect in them, you know. So but let them just, you know, be compliant with with the uh, health agents in mm-hmm. order to to do the test. And the the, 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 the there are today is supposed to be the first flight yeah, on about about two thousand as people are talking about the logistics if you well uh, a plane will bring 400 at a time mm-hmm. so if you're going to test these people at the airport um one everyone the time is going to take for to test 400 people but the last one on the plane if i was to go to the airport to receive me and my <laughs> my relative is the 400 person to be tested how long will i be in the airport they said there's a little maze where you know at least the people would you would be tested first and before and people be told you know, to come hours after the testing and not necessarily when the plane touches down. Mm-hmm. What do you think of that? Yeah, maybe the the testing now, you know. Well, they said as rapid. Yeah, it's faster, quality, yeah, rapid, it's faster uh, than before. Ah, faster than yeah, before. Yeah, faster than before. So I believe they've taken all those measures, uh, considering all those facts. Uh, okay, finally, we look at the protest in Kenya. Um, um, I mean, well, the familiar, famili- the familiar complaints, you know, and, and it has to do with introduction of a bill or tax, etc., etc. And we, unfortunately, the, the protest really got out of hand. People got killed, and the President Ruto's government came on a severe pressure to 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 ditch the taxation bill, the new tax bill, right? But this issue is common in, in many places. Um, Senegal, it happened there. Kenya, so people are worried that this uh, uh, youthful enthusiasm and this um, rebellion among youths is, is, a, is a thing to be watched. You know. for, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, normally it is taxes on taxes. On. We are not exempted. We haven't, well, the government is claiming that we don't um, increase tax. All what we do is to expand and broaden the tax base. <laughs> So, are you anxious that um, we have to watch um, at uh, the pulse in the youth dis- disillusionment in, mm. in, in, in Africa mm. so that we don't have a Kenyan situation in, in, in other places? Just like in the Gambia, too. So, um, this uh, tax increment is something that the citizens don't always want. They are increasing yeah. the tax base. They yeah. believe, yeah. government is arguing that. Yeah. They believe there are untapped, yeah. uh, you know, taxed areas, tax areas and not necessarily yeah. increasing the tax. Yes, for example, yeah, you know, uh, for example, in the Gambia, like prior to the local government elections, you know, now it's 
the, 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 the Navex increase the tax. No, I'm just yeah, talking. Not, increase, yes, increase no, I'm the rates of yeah, the yeah, the consumer. I'm just talking in general. Right, for, in general about for tax gas power. Yeah, yes, I'm just, units, yes, I'm just talking in general mm. about tax issues. Uh, not only about the expansion base, mm -hmm. but you just wake up one day mm -hmm. without notifying the people, mm -hmm. and then you just increase. Such as the cement importers case. Such, such as the cement Im importers case. Mm -hmm. It happened also in this health sector as well, mm -hmm. uh, because like, yeah, they, they have from, introducing uh, yes, yeah, they from, increasing from, the from consultation fees from twenty-five to hundred dollars. Yeah. Uh, uh, now it, it has started now, it, mm -hmm. and also is going to. The, the other end, uh, with, with, with the cement mm -hmm. importers as well yeah so, so it can also they can expand it to other areas as well mm -hmm. new or extended mm -hmm. you see so this is also this is a problem so and, i think and, and, areas and, and, and we, are, we are copying consultation before we, that yes side. yes so we are copying from each other mm -hmm. we are copying from senegal senegal is cop senegal has copied from another country mm -hmm. and another country is copying from senegal Mm -hmm. So there is a symbiosis, there is a connection, mm -hmm. you know, everything. We are all concerned, you mm -hmm. know, if you see our social media pages, we've all been, you know, advocating for... So we should ring the early warning bell here. Yeah. <laughs> so we should avoid, we should, there are certain things that are just unnecessary. And when the people uh, stand up, mm -hmm. you know, you cannot go against them. Mm -hmm. You just have to accept. Mm -hmm. And also, what we have to also uh, review is the use of force. Mm -hmm. against unarmed civil, yeah, civilian civilians. Situation, uh, civilians you know it mm -hmm. was a problem in senegal mm -hmm. and now also it's a problem in i think kenya situation police were high handed yes so honestly in, in, there was a little too much of brutality within within, is, within a very few fish yeah a few period of time yeah you know it didn't la last long mm -hmm. just you know within a period of mm -hmm. one week yeah i think the handling of the Christ, by the police actually aggravated and he, under, yes, under so, protest. So uh, such things do happen in in Europe, in France, America, but you don't hear. Yeah, you don't. You don't. Not that violence. Yes, yeah, that violence. You know, uh, they, they are not killed. You know, they 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 they, they are professionally handled. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think we have to we have to think about that. And when once there are uh, there is such protest. Yeah, such such protest, and there is. Uh, uh, so a such huge amount of uh, casualties mm -hmm. it has it, it normally has it consequences kind of angered people more yes. and then like for example for senegal mm -hmm. you know people are still you know uh, asking for the former president to you know to to to, to answer to those to be held accountable. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, to be held, uh, mm -hmm. accountable. Be held accountable and then in kenya also now you know they are just asking for the now they, yes for, now for, for, for him to step down mm. there are others are because of because of that as a consequence and, of and that. yeah and we we're interested because it's taxation that fuel these things yes Kex, what do you what do you use your tech yeah, like yeah. I said, yeah for me you know the people will be willing to pay tax if they are seeing that you know what they are paid you know is coming back oh, to them okay. in the that's, that's, side. that's important yes yeah. but uh, once you know you are collecting money from them putting more tax on them and they are not seeing the service you know, that their tax is going into in rendering service for example when they increase the uh the tickets uh for the medical the hospitals you know, yeah consultation you know, fees for fees medical you go down still now it's the same issue they only give you the government at the end of the day when you do your testings and even, even when you go for lab you pay you extra pay, you pay extra for lab, lab. And, and, and if you have your prescription you have you, have you, you don't get it from the public no medication. medication you have to go to the pharmacy because because in the tabasque i want there with the patient there or everything that i have everything you have to get it from privately yeah so people will now say okay what is the essence of me paying this one this rather than i go to the pharmacy and just buy this and just buy it or maybe hundred because you only go to the public facilities yes. to have prescriptions written for you. For you. Yeah. So this are the issues. So it's now then under the people there. So if you keep on increasing, increasing, and they are not seeing the service, service that is rendering, mm -hmm. that this is what will cause some of this uprising that are happening in other parts. If you are uh, this issue of Kenya, because they have been seeing the maybe service and not be rendered to them mm -hmm. in terms of one, they need public service in terms of public facilities. There's nothing absolutely there for them. So they struggle to even have access and they keep on paying tax. They keep on paying tax. So at the end of the day, when you come with one policy, it's by then people are already angered they just get up one day and they start this amass thing so government you know we are not because we know that we have a tax-based economy all yeah. of all the african countries yeah, yeah. we rely solely on tax to tax, provide yeah. service. More or less. service we provide it to the mm -hmm. citizens but once you fail in that obligation
obligations, then you should not tax uh, the people because you pay tax to provide the service for the people. And the law is very clear in terms of that. So once you fill in that obligation, why actually taxing the people? Yeah, good. Finally, we have just before we came on air, we, we saw news about deployment of uh, senior government officials. Um, uh, well, the, the government's argument, uh, the reason, justification has always been that um, it is good to enhance uh, uh, administration in, in areas to reshuffle them. But uh, yeah, there's another school of thought which says you don't take people from where they have expertise and take them to somewhere where there's not. Sure. Absolutely, I definitely disagree with the, uh, this uh, angle of Frequent policy. deployment, I mean, you know, permanent secretaries who are specialists in education Absolutely. find themselves on the fisheries, uh, you know, the professional fishermen found themselves, uh, to yeah. fishing expert, fish right. experts find themselves to be uh, at trade. Yeah. So on, ah, the justification is that, well, you know, you, they, they, should, they should be all around us, it makes them more versatile. So that's why, that's why we are un underperforming. Yeah. That's why, because this that's one of the reasons. They have the institutional memory. Mm -hmm. They are masters in these fields. Exactly. So mm -hmm. ministers are ceremonial. Ministers can change. You yeah, have, yeah, have the te technocrats. So these are the techno. They have the institution. How in terms of they guide the minister in terms of minister they are, has a ceremonial body. Institution is run by these permanent secretaries. Yeah. They are the one who have the institutional memory. They have the know how of this institution. So, but if you take a permanent secretary from minister of youth and sport, mm -hmm. you tell him that go to uh, the higher minister mm -hmm. of higher ed ed education. Yeah. So uh, if you have a, mini a permanent secretary of youth and sport, you take him to trade, who have never even have an idea of ministry of trade, and you have a minister who is just a ceremonial or a political appointee who come and serve that position, then you make the institution to be handicapped because the person who has the memory of the institution, who understand the know-how so that they will draft the policies and the programs in which the minister, because most of the time when they go to the parliament, you always see them there accompanied by their permanent secretaries you know, so that they will provide them the answers that they have because they don't know the institutional memory of this institution. Ones. So those are the ones that guide them. So you cannot be changing those people because once you do, do that, like, now the institutional memory is lost. So now you let them to start again, you know. You know. So for me, I didn't, you can change ministers, you can change other things. Those ones, I have no problem with. Permanent secretary, that's why they are called permanent. Permanent, exactly. <laughs> the word permanent <laughs> is, is didn't come, but it comes because for a purpose. Yeah, but you know. they, they, they are not, they are not no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, professor. Yeah, yeah. So the same, the same idea. I think they have to rise through ranks. You know, like if you are in that, if you are a specialist in agriculture, you know, you are in the agricultural department. So you rise through the ranks. You know, until you reach the permanent secretary stage level. So yeah, if if they move you, your assistant, you have deputy permanent secretary. Your uh, the, the deputy. No, what I mean is like whenever he moves from there, yeah. the other one should be there. And where you are oh, supposed you mean to be. The deputy should be made. Yeah, yeah, the, else no, 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 no. The, that, yes, right. Exactly. The deputy should just come and uh, overtake and uh, oversee the the the, 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 the secretary. Yeah, be promoted to, to the permanent secretary. And that permanent secretary, uh, maybe. You know, because it is, as, as he said, it's a permanent sector. So whenever he moves, maybe he's moving for for a higher job, for a higher thing. You know, in in his speciality. Yes. But, yes. Right, from there, but we don't we don't have to jumble up things. Uh, we're taking this one here uh, to the other area. So this is why it is important also, you know, to uh, emphasize, you know, to also. Uh, handle the uh, uh, the civil service school uh, proper uh, 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 yes so that, that that's where I, that's where you form that's where you train your experts. experts that's where you train your your technocrats yeah you know from there after that school they are taken directly to those ministries to take those functions so you will see uh, so much as that such maybe it may be much as the governments argue that you know, shuffling, reshuffling and redeployment, shuffling of six uh, may help enhance the administration. There's the argument that you will lose valuable knowledge uh, of institutions when you change specialists from this area to unknown mm -hmm. areas. And precisely that's what's happened and I think maybe they are trying to cater 
uh, for these governors that have been recalled because you know when you did oh, file yes. their petition at the yeah. courts you know challenging the appointment of the governors that they are not in line with the dictates of the uh, local government act the president withdrew all the uh, governors and their deputy governors and they put them as permanent secretaries in various ministries is that according to the, you you have you followed the uh, uh, g <laughs> the go and other things yeah. is that itself but i had the politicians for the critics saying that even that process is wrong like automatically you know getting somebody somewhere and made him deputy palm second secretary it's absolutely because i think there are stages there are stages in, in the they have to so, rise yeah, to rise the ranks, ranks, of, ranks of. so but this is what happens so i think maybe they want to fill uh, fit in oh the, you mean even this measure this recent yeah, measure. measures maybe they want to fit in them because there are how many governors two 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 how many regions you know, well, you deputy governors and those governors also. and deputy governors so yeah. they all recall and they came and now they take the permanent secretaries from the permanent secretary's mm -hmm. office they take them to uh, be governors and they the they there because the requirement is yeah. you must have a position of a permanent secretary. Secretaries. Yes. I see. So now those are the ones that replace them. So I think they want to filter them there. That's why they are trying to do this uh, risk of surveillance so that they will fit in the position. I and see. once they maybe get that one, they might go back to their governor's work because it needs the requirement, yeah. you know, for you to have the requirement. You know, but let's see what will be the decision of the court because the matter is still before the court. And, and in case you don't know about the recent uh, redeployments, how they call it, the government spokesman, Sankare, came out saying that there have been appointments and redeployments within the civil service. Demba Esba, Deputy Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology, is appointed on promotion as Permanent Secretary and redeployed to the President's office. Mr. Hassan M. Jallo, Permanent Secretary, Office of the President, is redeployed to the Ministry of Communication and Digital Economy as Permanent Secretary. Lamin A. Kamara, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Communication and Digital Economy, is redeployed to the Ministry of Petroleum as an Energy as Permanent Secretary. I think he was there before. Uh, Yanko Basay, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Information, is redeployed to the Gambia Prisons Service as Director of Administration. Mrs. Amin Jai, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Petroleum and Energy, is deployed to the Ministry of Information as Permanent Secretary. Meanwhile, one Mr. Abu Bakar Ja has been recalled as Deputy Head of Mission at the Gambia Embassy in Saudi Arabia and is appointed Deputy Director at the National Aid Secretariat. Well, those are the, the ones that have just been uh, announced by the government spokesman. Um, I've seen that uh, camera has come back. Camera used to be yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. Good. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. Professor Momoru Ba and uh, Kemeseng Sane for your insightful perspectives on the issues on our table today, the brunch. We will be back with more brunch on Saturday. Until then, have a great weekend. Islamic microfinance is becoming an increasingly popular mechanism for poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world. This microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832-151 or visit Yona Head Office at Tipa Garage, Bakote or visit any Yona branch located countrywide near you.
planning to have an uninterrupted electricity and water supply from solar energy in the Gambia and beyond. Worry no more, because Solar Enterprise will provide you with the solutions at reasonable cost. We have experienced personnel who can install and advise you about your electricity and water supply with a warranty period. We have good quality solar products from North America and Europe. We provide services and sell products to individuals, organizations, institutions, private offices, communities, and government. These products are solar panels, batteries, charge controllers, inverters, water pump, water heaters, freezers, submissable pumps, and general solar accessories. Visit our stores at 48 Kairaba Avenue and Bruceby Highway, or you can call us on 7657-479-980. 8483-340-9400 or 635-9906 Jamano Money Transfer Bureau of Chance Your go-to option when it comes to money transfer With Jamano, you can send money from anywhere in the world to your family and loved ones in the Gambia and be sure the funds will be delivered to them within the shortest time possible for your convenience, funds sent through Jamano Money Transfer can be picked from all the banks and multiple other financial institutions, including Ajib Bank, Trust Bank, GT Bank, Mega Bank, Basic Bank, Reliance Financial Services, and Approved Services. Visit our head office at Bruce B. Opposite AfricMed, next to Trust Bank Limited, or email us at info at jamanomt.com. You can as well call us on 310-3050 or 310-3051 or yet still 733-0688. Our opening hours are 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday to Saturday and 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Sunday. Jamano Money Transfer, your most trusted money transfer service where customer satisfaction is paramount. When you think of a simple, fast, and reliable money transfer, think Jamano Money Transfer. Yo, not transfer us. Yeah, transfer us. Have code in you. Okay. What's that? Insila ID sorta. Sorry. I got it. Bro, Alba. Alba. Bara Allah sabi sorta ya. Ah, bara ki jana nungku nubara karya. Ah, jano miwana forest de biro. Gambia tongko na lombari ya biro. Ah, birim ko na fokato. Bara isi kodo kino kato ni fobolong blabe. 56 branches smaller so the Gambia jam. Huh? Ka. Gambia kono ani Gambia bantala bankol. Nko kono ki a bere. Hmm? Kodo si fa si fa fo falindiro fo nyadi lafta meme men na kodi to koto ni kodi maro. Jannam number 1 di nyonta. And num fana nata another enterprise is sorted. Wala wala min di ko domorol fana kol fana be firale de dadi ma ni domorol di fana bete at. Gambia daw da yalo ma fun fa kendol sorted di. Ha e wo mo e odi at. Ha afelen da. Mo ka ni na lafta nyela kendol e bina. Yalo e bukani la kol la baraka. Ha 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 yalo ndel chosa no lo. Baraka.